Hello everybody, Lord Baldrith here with a story by Sir Style Tekel. Islug needs a bath. Usara whispers to Eldirk and Minstrel. Are you sure you will be here? Eldirk responds. Yeah, I've been spread rumors that right underneath these falls have been a great place for salmon. Minstrel leans over. How do you know he'll be here today? Asara whispers back. Mud just had a new fishing pole delivered. Master crafted from the best materials that could be found in New Britannia. Minstrel and Eldirk nod with a knowing smile on their faces, being careful to avoid the branches in the thicket the three of them are hiding in. Eventually, whistling is heard as Islug makes an appearance to the side of the stream right below the waterfall. They watch him as he seems to carefully search the ground around himself and looks in the general area as if concerned for his safety. Seeming to relax, he unwraps a beautifully crafted fishing pole with gem inlays and boar skin wrap for a good handhold. After baiting the hook and tossing into the stream and right past the waterfall, his lug drops onto a small pad he brought with him and lights a pipe. He seems content and half sleepy as the bobber spins lazily in the water and smoke rings circle his head. Once he had been at it for a while, his three servants look at each other and nod. Edric whispers, Let me go first, since I'm not as noisy as boar in the woods. Let's do this, just like the last couple of times we should be fine. Slowly, Edric moves towards Islug, his feet seeming to fall in between every leaf and twig along the way. There is a rope in his hands, ready for some sort of unscrupulous use. The others hang back, but clearly ready to run forward and assist. Suddenly, Elder pounces, wrapping the rope around Islug's wrists. Islug, startled from his lethargy, his pipe dropping to the ground, lets out a bellow. Nay, not again! What the hell is wrong with ye three? The others, at Islug's side, now help Elder. Usara begins pulling off Islug's clothes, while Minstrel and Eldirk hold him still, all of them trying to advert their gaze. Eldirk is the one that responds. You stink! We have to live with you! We told you, if you won't take baths, we'll give them to you! Islug, thrashing, responds, Damn ye! Tis not natural! If you leave it be, you'd get to like the smell, fine tobacco and ale, lad. What kind of person are ye? The alchemist, I can understand, but nay. His speech trails off as Eldrick stuffs a piece of cloth into Islug's mouth and mumbles, Should have done that first. A few minutes later, see the three of them trying to hold on to the naked Islug in the fast-flowing water while he sputters, the gag having loosened, when they dump another bucket of soap and oils on him. Suddenly, Usara's foot goes flying out from under her as she steps on Islug's new pole and lands on her back. Out of reflex, the other two try and grab her, letting go of Islug, who is promptly carried down the rapids, bobbing with his hands loosely tied and a piece of cloth half hanging out of his mouth. His words barely heard. Humph! Oh! Ow! Oh, they'll pay for this! Oh, bull! Ah! Usara stands up slowly, while the other two watch Islug going down the stream at a pace too fast to hope to catch up to. Ildirk leans down and picks up the pole looking at it. Well, it's well made. Not a scratch on it, at least. The other two glance over at it and then back to the rapids. Usara speaks. What are we going to do if he doesn't survive this? Minstrel shrugs. Find another job? Elder grimaces. Well, where else are we going to find someone stupid enough to give us room, board, materials, and a gold a week, and that thinks he's getting the best end of the deal? The others visibly wince. Usara begins gathering up his slug's fishing pole, waders, and jacket, and glances over at Minstrel, and says, It may help calm him down if you figure out how to make that rose die he's been wanting to die these with. Minstrel just shrugs. The three wander off looking a bit forlorn. Later that night finds Islug in a little tavern in a small village, wrapped with towels and shivering a little before a fire. A bowl of stew in front of him and five or six empty tankards. Children surround him, giving him his full attention and eyes big, listening to his every word. That's right. It had to have been at least a hundred and fifty pounds salmon. 
I've pulled in those around 60 or so. They say are the biggest with nay a problem before, but this one was huge. The slug holds up his hands as wide apart as he can, the towels falling to the floor, and the kid's eyes widen at the spectacle. I was just sitting there with my new pool when bam, next thing I knew, my face hit the water. He picks up and downs another tankard in one gulp. By the way, thank ye again for fishing me out at that bridge. Did nay think I was gonna make it, what with my hands getting caught up in that rope I had brought along for a stringer and all. Hundred and fifty, I tell ye, reminds me of that time.